If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Downfall Network for more cool content. What's up, everyone? Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have an album review for you. One that we definitely had on our radars for the month, and one I was definitely excited for because it is definitely a comeback album. Yes. Was the newest album from Benediction Scriptures. This comes out on the 16th of October on Nuclear Blast Records. This is their first album in 12 years. And this marks the return of their longtime vocalist, Dave Ingram first one he's done with them since 1998. Now a little backstory on these guys, they formed in 1989 in Birmingham, England, and they originally started with Barney Greenway on vocals, and then he moved on to a lesser known band called Napalm Death that no one's ever heard of, unfortunately. Yeah, I, who the hell are those guys? I don't know, I think they play like some sort of core that has grind. I don't know, huh. there's a name for it. Let us know in the comments. This is their eighth full length, and honestly, the only two remaining original members are the guitarists, Darren Brooks and Peter Rue. And these guys have pretty much been at the helm of all the writing since the formation of the band. And these guys apparently had a giant back catalog of awesome riffs because I'll come out and <laughs> say it right now. This is the best thing they've released since their big heyday in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. This and, is just an ass whooper of an album. Yeah, and this could have easily followed anything they had in the 90s because this album is fiercely old school. Oh, yeah. Transcend the Rubicon is up there with one of my favorite like underrated death metal albums from the 90s. It is absolutely amazing. And I still think the Grand Leveler, the album before that, I thought was actually really excellent too. This definitely falls in the footsteps except with, you know, different production. Right away when you hear the opening track, Iterations of I, the production is a little odd, at least in terms of some of the levels. The thing we noticed right away was that the vocals were kind of out front, that the drums were kind of out front, and the guitars were kind of in the background. That's what we first noticed. However, as you progress through this album, you get used to it, and it doesn't sound yeah. that off. And honestly, the mix is good. It's separated mm -hmm. well. It's very clear, but not without grit. Like, the guitars are definitely like yes. a good, chunky, yes. kind of halfway between death metal and thrash metal, but when they slow it down, there is a hardcore sort of stomp fierce, to it. Fierce, fierce 90s hardcore. Definitely, like a little bit of like kind of groove metal, but this is still 100% death metal. The Crooked Man, amazing sort of mid-tempo stomp, and I love how this album is paced because the opening track is an absolute thrashy barn burner. Next one brings into like a D beat stomp. This one slows it down to a nice little like mid tempo kind of chug a thon. Like all of these songs are just headbanger worthy. Well, and it's like, and too, another cool thing is because we've both seen these guys live. Yep. Um, and the beginning of Iterations of I has this huge like rock and roll beginning. I love Symbols it. and fucking like they're raring to go. These guys know how to open every song and it's it's not through like oh they have this cool spooky sample or this is like a spoken word bit or just this weird cinematic soundscapes none of that no they none. just know how to open a song like with like you know punctuated tom hits and a big signature riff and they lead you into that really well and that's yep. on every track yeah and and i was so excited like when i commented halfway through the album i was like man there's no filler yet and i'm really happy there's no filler and there never was and that was pretty sweet. Everything just, here you go. Yeah. There was really no like pretense. This was all about delivering the hooks right up front. And in terms of like, you know, like song structure, it still stays very much within like old school death metal box, mm -hmm. lots of thrash influence, but it's what they do in that box. This box is a fun <laughs> box. It's full of riffs. D beat stomps, yep. just flat out moshers. What? Great songwriting, but it's all within this one little area. Like, I, I dare you not to bang your head in this album. I dare you. I dare you not to bang your head. <laughs> one of my favorites was Storm Crow, which they released a really awesome video for, which I believe the reason why Dave Ingram's actually sitting down is because he had hip surgery, which you earned it. Take a break. You didn't even have to shoot the video. They could have done a lyric video, but I appreciate the effort going into it. And plus, you were sitting there drinking wine in a glass or a bottle, like, 
that's that's cool as hell. Now here's the thing too, and we were talking about this as you go through the album. It's spot on, and I'll never not hear it ever again. Nick uh, turned to me and he says, "You know who Dave Ingram reminds me of?" I said, "No," and he said, "Sweetums from the Muppets." The voice yeah. and the beard and the, the <laughs> just the draped hair over the face it was like, "Yep, he's death metal Sweetums." <laughs> that's all I could see now. Which honestly, next to Animal Sweetums is probably the most yeah. metal Muppet. So Agreed. that's a compliment. Yep, take it. Definitely. <laughs> Stormcrow in particular, though, I love the way this starts off, like this big signature opening riff and these big tom stumps, which, my God, the toms sound like they're about 40 feet yeah, across. Yeah, dude, like he's hitting kettle drums. <laughs> oh, oh, boom, boom. Wow. And these guys just know how to deliver, like, a good signature anchor riff to all these songs. Like, all these songs have them. Just a big hook, but it's not like a big melodic hook. In terms of like melody and solos and leads, they're kind of just peppered all over the album. They're not like super melodic. They're just enough to sort of like accentuate that moment a little bit and kind of lift it out of the, you know, like the caveman circle pit. Yeah. Uh, and the pacing on this album is pretty cool too. Even though the, the longest song is five minutes and 24 seconds, it never loses steam. No. Like from track to track, they... Nestle in like barn burners with these heavier songs. They're split up really well. Like yeah. you don't get two barn burners with another barn burner to follow. It's usually, you know, something else that's a little bit different, whether there's like more groove in one song or this one kind of slows it down a bit, or they just go with that double time, like bolt thrower stomp, which I definitely heard that a lot. Yes, me too. A lot of thrash. Lots like a of thrash. Lots of thrash. Like a Testament and Slayer, oh. you get right away. Stormcrow, for me, reminded me of like old school Sepultura. Yeah, yeah. Um, just Embrace the Kill is a flat out thrashy barn burner. Mm -hmm. and like it, it just stomps you. And again, no pretense, it just launches right into it. It's pretty much having the pit explode right in front of you and like, well, I better move or die. <laughs> is, I, I wrote down, this is where the crowd gets injured. Yep. Like, there's just that one song when it starts, and you know right away, like, oh, man, should I stand in the back? Is it going to matter? <laughs> no. It's just, I'll, I'll, oh, those are my teeth. I'll pick those up. Yep. I don't want to litter. The thing I really liked on this song was when it comes down to the verse riff, it has this sort of, like, hardcore, like, sound to the verse riff, but it will shift back and forth between that and a death metal uh, tremolo, yeah, which yeah. I think sounds awesome. And they actually add a cool, like harmony to it. It's like kind of thickens the sound and makes it sound a little bit sinister and then back down to the beat down. And then like Embrace the Kill is where the, the leads become noticeable. Like they're they're peppered in in the beginning but as you get to the back half like the last three, four songs of this album they start to really play with it and Embrace the Kill definitely is the first oh, yeah. time that a, a notable lead appeared. Never When. Never When actually has probably my favorite lead and I think it's probably the most notable one. It's very melodic and the almost like Middle Eastern melodies that yep, pop up yep. in it really reminded me a lot of Death, like early Death. Yep, like it yep, definitely screamed yep. Chuck Schuldiner. The verse riff in Never Win 2 is cool. It's got like that Fear Factory feel to it. Just the verse though. All these songs stand out. Definitely. There's all memorable parts in all of this. And again, with the pacing thing, none of these songs sound like the one that came before. It does in the sense of the pacing where it's, you know, DB. They or love just the like DB. A punk, like, yeah. But right. the DB, it's fun. And I mean, if you have a hardcore sort of drive, like yeah. that sort of punky feel, you're gonna use the D-beat. It's it's just a good way to get the pit spinning. People love that beat. I love that beat. They yeah. use it quite a bit on here, but the way they break it up is really good. Reminds me a lot of Dave Lombardo. He said it earlier too, like, it doesn't sound triggered. If it no. is triggered, it's the most natural sound I've ever heard come out of tr triggers. But like, you can tell that the whole band throughout this album is beating the piss out of their instruments. Everyone's performance on here is top notch. Dave Ingram sounds great. Yes. Like he sounds yes. like almost like he did back in the early days of the 90s. Yeah. Dave sounds fresh in here. And granted, there are some filters on here and I think a fair amount of doubling, but it's still 100% him. You can tell that this is still going to be the voice you hear. Yeah, live. yeah. His voice doesn't sound processed. In, yeah, processed or um, it doesn't sound like it's reaching the end of its life. Like, Chris Barnes. It sounds like he's got plenty yeah, of life. Yeah, it sounds like he's got a lot of punch left in him, which is sweet, because I want him to continue from this. <laughs> yes. The drum work, I think, is absolutely solid. This guy doesn't, like, do, like, a lot of, like, super flashy drumming, but what he does, he does so well. He accents the songs mm -hmm, beautifully. Mm -hmm. Like, 
when there's a necessary build up to a spot, like he's on it, like some cool tom hits, get the war drums going, yep. kind of rev up everyone. And the transitions he does, buttery smooth. Yes. There's not a single moment during this album where I said, like, oh, that didn't fit. No, it fit. <laughs> I think the whole mantra behind this, and I was watching some of the interviews with the uh, guitarist, was let's recapture that sound we had. Because even they sort of admitted that, yeah. you know, they had a bit of a falling off, I would say, after Transcend the Rubicon. And they wanted to write something that was like 100% like them again, like the, you know, that meaningful sound that the, they really got noticed for. Yep. And I will say they have achieved it. Yes. This sounds like the benediction that I heard like legends of because I started off with some newer stuff and I was like, eh, and then I picked up the older stuff like, oh, okay, that's yeah, right, why people right. love this band. So when we say hardcore is filtered in and, and different styles of the old school metal and, and death metal, uh, tear off these wings. First of all, let me say that um, um, back to back, the intro was cool. Um, the, the track before Tear Off These Wings, In Our Hands, The Scars, that also starts off with this really cool just drum and bass thing. Yep. And again, like, In Our Hands, The Scars was almost like an anthrax type of thing where it was just drum and bass, and I was like, all right, here we go. Yep, they well, let the guitars fade in after the bass kind of like hammers out the rhythm section, yep. the drums are doing the D beat, and then yep. boom. So Tear Off These Wings opens up with, again, like a bass and drum thing, but when that riff kicks in, dude, it is solid helmet. Yeah. Honestly, that was one of the first things, like, it, this reminds me of, like, 90s hardcore and stuff, like, related to that much like Helmet, like, even, like, touches of hate breed or, like, a lot of stuff that was on Victory Records. Like, I even, <laughs> I even mentioned early Six Feet Under, like, Maximum Violence. It was a riff structure kind of like that, and it was just really simple. It just had a solid but, groove to it. Yeah. I mean, like, it, it, you just felt it right away, and, like, this was one of the slower songs on here, but it still broke into, like, some you know, slightly more upbeat sections, but I like the fact that this was kind of a lone standout, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. groovy banger. Now, the odd thing about this song, though, yes, is the finish on it, because they kind of do the big finish like you'd hear big live. Big rock and roll again. Thank yeah. you, guys. But this is the eighth track on a 12-track album, so it kind of felt a little <laughs> out of place, like this should have been the last track, and honestly, any of these tracks... Could have been the closing track, and this would have been a solid. But I, I figured you want to bookend that feeling. Like, you had the big live opening. We're about addiction. We're here to fuck you up. Right, right. That was the closing moment. Now, you know, that would be the big thank you, and buy our shirts. We'll see yeah, you around. Buy our shirts and take a picture while we're going to bow, kind of, because we're old. Yep. <laughs> and, I don't know, it just feels kind of out of place. But, overall, I mean, that's probably my lone complaint on here. Yeah, mine too. The off feeling of the guitar level in the beginning, even though, like I said, you, you get used to it. You're going to figure it out. As long as you can hear these riffs. Right. Because these riffs are just beating you over the head repeatedly. I, and we were both talking, I can't, again, Nick and I have very nice car stereos. And, and I, Yeah, I can't I wait to I cannot hear wait to jam this on the car. It's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. So overall, I'm going to give this four and a half stars, and Benediction, what a comeback. Yeah. I am so glad you guys returned to the sound that just absolutely made you guys, you know, underground legends. This album pretty much excels on every, every front. If you love Benediction in their early years through the 90s, you're gonna love this because this is a return to that. The production is a little bit more modern, but it is 100% their sound and they just sound reinvigorated and mm -hmm. This needs to be seen live, I think. I, I definitely want to see this live. <laughs> right. When I, shows come back. Again, I don't want to see anything live, yes. man. I'll fucking listen to somebody blowing bubbles in milk in like a cereal bowl at this point. As long as there's some melody, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I so need to go to a show. But yeah, absolute banger. Definitely get this one. Benediction fans, this is the album you've been waiting for. I also give it a four and a half. I can't even say much more than what Nick said other than the fact that like... Once again, this is what a comeback record should be, and the fact that they came back after all this time and released something that could have easily followed the sound that made them uh, made their career like it just this is a banger and it's nonstop. And, yeah, and there's no filler and everything is straight to the point, but it's it's groovy. There's great separation between songs. Everything has a hook and it, 
It's all memorable. I had a great time. Yeah. It, you know, a sign of a good record typically when you're listening to it is I can't wait to see what follows this riff or I can't wait to see what comes next. Like that's a sign of a really good album and the fact that I know I'm going to jam this again. Kick ass. Great job, you guys. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Totally. So if you enjoyed the review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We will catch you later. Take care.